everyone. So we are going to start. Most of you guys are here. Um, so first of all, I just want to say good afternoon, everyone. You are at the Capability Statement and Elevator Pitch Review District Connect Prep. Uh, I want to, to thank you all for being here. My name is Aziza Mazamel, Business Development Specialist with the Business Opportunities Division. I will be facilitating this training today along with Keith Howard, Manager of the Business Opportunities Division. This session is being recorded and will be sent out at the conclusion of the training. If you have any questions, please type it in the chat and we'll make sure to answer it as we go along. Keith, take it away. Thanks so much, Aziza. Good to see everyone, see some familiar faces. Um, looks like we had some echo there. So uh, good to see everyone. Good to see some familiar faces. My name is Keith Howard. I'm the manager of the Business Opportunities Division for the Department of Small and Local Business Development. If you don't know who we are, you need to. Um, our team, you know, I'm just going to give a little, little brag. We're hardworking and we're good, right? And we support our CDEs the best way we know how. So why are we doing this training? Well, we're doing this training because what I've seen over the last couple of years of participating in District Connect is a prepared business is the one that wins, right? There are a lot of moving parts that go with District Connect. So I felt like these two items, uh, if, if there's a, a bit of prep for these two things, which are the capability statements, the elevator fits, if we did that, that would prepare you for uh, District Connect. Now, what, what is District Connect? So District Connect, it's a conference, right? It's a conference around um, what I hear the most when we're doing technical assistance with you all, which is access to capital, access to content, right? So day in and day out, what we hear is, I can't get anyone to call me back. I don't know who to call. Uh, I didn't know that information, et cetera, et cetera. It's not intuitive, folks, it's not. I'm a former small business owner. Government contracting is not an intuitive process. So the more information you have, the better. So I really wanted to hone in on um, not only capability statement and elevator pitch, but what is District Connect? What is the day, right? So the way I'm going to do that with you is I'm going to just take it by floors. So first of all, it's going to be October the 24th. Um, it's going to be at the MLK library, right? And the first floor is registration. So if you have not registered, you need to register. There's two registrations. There's one for the actual event, which is the general registration. And then there's another for uh, matchmaking. And I'll talk about the matchmaking shortly. But on that first floor registration, last year we had 600 people registering. So this is one of the largest events that our agency puts on. If you get there on time, which is what time is easy? 9.30 a.m. 9.30 a.m. You should not have the long wait in line to get in, right? So if there's a day that you want to be on time, that's the day, okay? But before you even do that, if you have not registered, Go ahead out on the link and, uh, and register for, for District Connect. So first floor, that's what it'll be about is registration. All right, then the second floor is all about access to capital, right? So um, there are two things that I hear all the time. One is clean hands and issues with clean hands. So we're gonna have many representatives from the Office of Tax and Revenue. If you want to meet with them, you have to go out into our bookings link and you have to book time with them. That's with the Office of Tax and Revenue. I would strongly recommend whether you have a clean hands issue or not, if you have any sort of tax issue that you book that time with the Office of Tax and Revenue on the second floor during District Connect. Now, everyone else, uh, we you will have access to banks and to um, community Development Financial Institutions, CDFIs. So they will be on a first come, first serve basis where we will schedule time with you to meet with uh, the necessary banks. I believe that is uh, First National Bank, m and Bank, TD Bank, and then our CDFIs are uh, 
each place and life assets. I can't remember. I can't believe I remember that off the top of my head. But okay. So yeah. So if you want anything to do with access to capital, which is what we all need to grow our businesses, you'll want to make sure that you make time on the second floor at District Connect. Fourth floor. Fourth floor is all about matchmaking. This is really the meat and potatoes of District Connect. This is what all of you want to at some point get into. It gives you an opportunity to get in front of a government agency. This is why we're going over the capability statement, because that's a good tool to use if you have very limited time with, you know, whoever uh, the agency is that you want to meet with. So again, if you want to book time, uh, you need to register for matchmaking with a given agency. It's filling up quickly. There's not many spots left, so you, you want to get in there today as soon as you can and get your time booked. Now, by registering you, by registering early, you'll receive a wristband. That wristband you'll get at registration. That allows you entrance into the fourth floor. No wristband, no entrance. Period. The end. There's no conversation required. You didn't register. and get in. Right? So I don't mind being the guy that gives the good news and the other news. So do your homework, right? This is part of the preparation. Okay, so if you go on the link and you see, you know, hey, I've been trying to get into so-and-so agency. Boom, they have a vacancy, they have an opening, book that time. All right. Um, fifth floor. So fifth floor, there's a lot going on in the fifth floor. So first of all, our opening session is on the fifth floor. Um, so you'll hear from our interim director, Rosemary Selger Evans. Um, this will be a short program, right? Because we believe in, you guys, you guys didn't come there to hear speeches. You came there to get access to capital and access to contracts, and that's what we want you to do. So, um, but that opening session is important because it'll be time for networking. Um, and the other thing that'll be happening on the fifth floor all day that day will be our exhibit tables. So certain agencies have asked to exhibit where they'll give general information but that's another place that you could do the training you're getting today. You could drop that capability state. You could have elevator pitch conversations right there at the exhibit table, especially for those of you that are locked out of the matchmaking, right? So you're not going to be able to have an in-depth conversation, but you sure could have a get to know and get a contact. So that's also on the fifth floor is our exhibit hall, fifth floor. So you've got the opening session in the auditorium. The exhibit floor will be right outside. And then we're going to have uh, some workshops after the opening session. These workshops are ones that I think would be interesting to you all. Topics such as subcontracting, right? So CBEs should know this by heart that any DC government contract over 250,000, 35% must go to who? A CBE, right? And specifically a CBE that is small or SB. There's going to be a panel uh, just of DSLBD managers. Because a lot of times what we see are the CBEs that are winning are the ones that know the entire breadth of what the SLBD does, right? So they don't just go to the biz ops team, but they go over to certification. They go over to our NOA team, et cetera, et cetera, to find out what are some of the other opportunities that this agency is offering. We're going to do, uh, for those of you that uh, have an interest in access to capital, we're going to do a, a uh, panel discussion specifically around loan applications. Right, which for some is a heavy lift. I've done it myself. Again, not an in intuitive process. So you, you want to be in on that. And then the last workshop of the day um, will be run by our Office of Contract and Procurement. And they're going to just basically tackle winning contracts from A to Z. Like, what are the necessary steps to winning contracts? So that's another. So all of those are good, right? So you should start mapping out your day now. You know, if you have matchmaking booked, OK, I, I, I got to go that matchmaking, but it's the same time as this workshop. And I, I want to do both. Can't be two places at one time. I would not miss my matchmaking. I'll just say that. Um, also on the fifth floor this year, something different that we're doing. We're going to have a room. It'll be called the lightning room. In this room, it'll be short, quick information sessions. Right. So some of the topics will be a representative from SBA. Um, there'll be a bonding representative. There'll be someone from the Department of Insurance, Securities and Banking. Uh, we'll have the DOES uh, Talent and Client Services team there. 
So again, and all of this will be, you'll be able to get this information when you're at this one. So I just wanted to let you all know, you can see it's a lot of moving parts. Um, I'm fortunate to have a great team that can manage all of this stuff. But I hope you come out and say hello. Uh, I hope I get to meet uh, some of you there and we exchange contact information. And uh, without further ado, I'm going to kick it back over to Aziza uh, to go over elevator pitch and then I'll pop back. I mean, to go over capability statement and then I'll pop back on to discuss uh, elevator pitch. Aziza. Thank you so much, Keith. Um, as he was speaking, I was dropping the links to register for the event, District Connect, if you haven't done so already. I also dropped the link to book for matchmaking. Uh, so for the fourth floor batch matchmaking with the agencies, partners, primes, um, and sports books, you do have to book in advance. So you cannot uh, see them without a uh, registration so make sure you do that if you want to meet with them and it is first come first serve so if you haven't done so already please make sure to do that so starting off we're first gonna um just a quick review of what the business opportunities division does so as you can see here we assist cbe's navigate and participate in procurement activity opportunities um uh, which is what District Connect is all about, conduct engaging and informative workshops, which is what we're doing here, facilitate matchmaking sessions, you know, like at District Connect and enhance CBE capacity in sports majoring industry. So getting into capability statements, um, the basics, what is a capability statement? So by definition, it is a perfect promotional or marketing statement about your business and its capabilities and skills that advertise who you are and what you do. So in layman's term, a resume for your business. And why do you need a capability statement? So capability statements are required in many government registration process. So if you've done a TA with us after we you know, do initial uh, introductions, we probably have asked you if you have a capability statement. So as a business, that is something you must have. Um, it's a door opener to new agencies. So for example, when you're doing your matchmaking sessions or if you're just networking around at District Connect, it's good to have on hand to kind of give people an idea of what your business is. It's a proof of your qualifications, proof of your past performance and sets you apart from your competitors. Um, all right, so what are key areas and strategies to include in a successful capability statement? So you want to make sure that you have your core competencies and capabilities. So what is the service that you provide? You want to let them know out the gate. Differentiators, what sets you apart from, you know, your competitors, other people doing the same thing as you. So you want to include things like if you have any facilities or any equipment that your competitors may not have. Past performance, so if you have done work, whether uh, primarily with government, local or federal, you wanna include that to let them know that you are capable and include quantifiers. So we wanna encourage that you put numbers, so percentages, uh, things of that nature. You wanna, these are things that are gonna stand out. Corporate data, including industry codes. So these will be NIGP codes. So your most relevant and IGP codes that get most of your work, you wanna include them on here. Uh, depending on how many you have, you don't wanna oversaturate it, but you should have your top and IGP codes there. And of course your contact information. So this should be your name, number, uh, active website, um, your address, et cetera. And also it's not mentioned on here, but if most of you are CVE certified, you should have that on there. Next um is tips and tricks so you want to tailor your capability statement to your audience so in this case for government you want to make sure that you have separate ones for federal or local so if you're working with dc government you want to make sure that you're for example using nigp codes and not NAICS codes and you could do this you could keep most of the stuff the same you could just create two to differentiate between that or if you're also tailoring it to primes, if you're subcontracting. Um, you wanna make your capability statement easy to follow and find the information. So you don't want them to be searching for too much. You want it to be in their face. And continuing that, you wanna make it attractive and visually appealing with good photos, infographics, or illustrations of products, services, et cetera. 
you want to make sure that it is current up to date. So you don't want um, information from 1990. You want to make sure that they they know that you are up and running. Uh, and it's like from the first topic, you want to say uh, prepare two different capability statements, a short version. Well, this is if your business has been in uh, active for a long time, you want to Primarily have a one pager, but if you have much more content, you want to have a longer in-depth version that you could provide if asked. So um, I'm going to show you guys the template that we use when working with you guys, the capability statement that we could review that you can model your capability statements after. We will also be sending this out to you at the conclusion of the training. So this, uh, the first two pages are essentially uh, a longer in-depth uh, description of what I just went through in the past two slides. Um, and then at the, sorry, the first three pages. So at the end is the actual capability statement. As you can see here, it is very um, vivid. So it's a lot of color. It stands out. Um, at the very top, you have the company. Um, I'm, my apologies, Keith, just let me know that you guys cannot see that, so I'm going to uh, oh. share that with you guys. Apologies Aziz is doing that. I think there was a couple things in the chat. Let me try and tackle those real quick. One was, if you include the NIDP codes, it is, is it necessary to have the NAICS codes? Um, no, and here's why, because you're going to be in front of D.C. buyers. So the next codes are for federal government. So the D.C. buyers, they won't that that will be foreign language to them. So, yeah, you want to you want to stay with your NIDP codes. Now, if you're not a CBE, and I know that there are some on the call that are not CBEs, um, but you're going to be a CBE. I know you are. You don't meet me at District Connect. We don't do that. But um yeah, if you're if you're doing business with the federal government right now, then absolutely go ahead and put your next codes on. You gotta have something to show some sort of capability and pass the job. So these are good. Yeah. Okay. Sorry guys. Um, but as you can see here, this is at the bottom of the document that we will share with you guys at the end of the training. But the first thing that you see uh, is the company name and the company uh, address and contact information. So that's the address. You guys, you should make sure that it is a Washington DC address. You don't wanna raise any concerns, especially if you are a CBE, you should have a Washington DC address along with a Washington DC phone number. And you wanna make sure that you have a active website that if they want more information, they could go there and get that. You don't want them to click are interested and your website is not working. And then over to the left, you see that they are CBE certified and they also provide the number. In this place, make sure you do that, but also you can in its place put that uh, CBE logo. If you are a CBE, you can request it from the certification team. And then continuing down, you see that they have uh, provided their main, uh, my apologies, it's not responding, but to the left, you see that they have provided their CPE uh, NIGP codes. So this is what they do most of their business with, that they believe they do business with, and they believe that they will get the most business with. And then they provided their capabilities. So experts in, supply chain management, etc. cetera. Um, you wanna make sure that you are providing your core capabilities in this area. And in the differentiators, um, sure why it's blanking out some of the spaces, I'm gonna exit and share again so that you guys can see the full document. You're muted. Okay. 
pick up. So while Aziz is doing going through the technical difficulty there, I'm trying to uh, capture some of the questions in the chat. Uh, I think I got all of them. There was one, uh, Dr. Shanklin, you were asking, let's see, I appreciate the info. I registered online, do I have to get a wristband? So you, you'll, you'll be given a wristband at MLK Library if you registered for matchmaking. If you registered for matchmaking, not general registration. If you register for matchmaking. Then the second part was when I registered, the workshops were not listed. Um, we have a link for the book. Are you? Are you asking about the workshops on the fifth floor or more uh, matchmaking? I signed up for matchmaking, and when Mr. Keith talked about the overlap, I didn't see the workshops, so I don't want to have overlaps with workshops and matchmaking because I have sure. three matchmaking already sure. scheduled. Sure. So the the workshops are, are you know you can come and go as you please. Right, so you can walk in if you see up. Oh, it's time for my matchmaking. I got to go. You can walk out, right? So there is no registration to for the workshops. Um, you know what some companies do if they have the ability to do it is have one person sit in that and the other person go to the matchmaking. Um, if you're a micro company and it's just you, you can't be two places at once. My recommendation is do not miss your matchmaking appointment. Here at the end, because we're gonna we're gonna fill those. If if you're not there, we're gonna fill them. But at the end of the day, yeah, I, I would just, that's why you kind of want to, when you get there, that's why if you're on time, you'll see what the times are and what time the workshops are, et cetera, et cetera. And you'll know like, oh, okay, well, hey, I'm not going to be able to make that workshop for whatever reason. But there's so much information that day, you're not going to get it all, but try and get as much as you can. Um, you. Sure, you're welcome. I think I got, I think I answered all of the other questions that were out there. Let me see. There was one about um, you know, I got that with the next code. There was one about um, should I list my private experience? Sure, if that's all you have, right? But if you like, if you look at the example of the uh, template that we have up on the screen right now, this while this capability statement looks nice, it looks really professional and all that. But when you really dig in the weeds, this company doesn't have any past performance. They really don't. But it doesn't look like it because sure. right? it's done so well, right? But when you look at their past performance, by the way, I like to use logos, right, for to show my past performance. That way, I don't have to. I can kind of leave them with something. It's kind of you know, kind of a tease. Leave them with something. But this right here, all they're saying is they were rated outstanding by whom? Their customers. Well, who is that? They don't really say. Um, they talk about being a, a, an approved supplier. Okay. Well, the CBEs on the call could say. I'm on the DC supply schedule if you're on, right? They say they're a preferred vendor. Okay, well, if you register for one of our regional partners, you could say that, right? So really as good as this capability statement looks, they really don't have any, uh, you know, real tangible past performance. And that's how adept you have to be uh, when you're when you're writing, you shouldn't uh, the night before try and do your capability statement for District Connect. That's a living, breathing document that you should already have. OK. Um, let's see, Miss Ainsley said most of the slots seem to be taken. Yes, yes, that is very true. This this is the meat and potatoes of District Connect. It's been open for quite some time. Actually, we're we're surprised that it wasn't filled up last week. So, you know, all I can say on that one is if 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 there's something left that interests you, get in on that. What will the process be for filling slots for no shows? Let me speak to that. So the the no shows, this is what we're going to do on that. Um, there'll be someone at on the fourth floor uh, assigned to no shows. They will be on the outside of uh, the the conference center where we're where we're actually doing the matchmaking so that person will work uh, in tandem with our team on the inside to manage those slots um you know so I, I would say you just want to be around for that um we're not expecting a ton of no-shows I gotta be honest with you so 
Um, there will be a process. There will be someone out front who have a laptop prepared to uh, plug someone in if, if that does happen. So uh, you'll see that on the day of. There are some agencies that I would like the opportunity to attend if possible. If a pending certification, is it appropriate to add that? So those certifications, I think this is Chibu, uh, good, to, good to hear from you, that these certifications are federal certifications. So again, if, if you are a CBE, you would, it's more strength for this event if you list your CBE and your certification number. If you're not a CBE and you are doing business with the federal government, then absolutely. Pending certifications, I try and stay away from unless I list that on the actual CAPE statement. But me personally, it's just personal preference. Um, I don't list certifications until I have them. But that's just personal preference, not the not the gospel. Um, how many codes is too many? Well, if you're talking specifically for your capability statement, I think it should be eye pleasing. So this one is around if you can scroll down just a little bit. This one you know, based on the template given about half a dozen. Right. So it's all about the aesthetics. You don't want to have a whole list. You know, I mean, I don't want to get tired before I've even read it. Right. So by by this is very aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Um, I wanted to attend subcontract. I did not see panel time until the schedule matchmaking. So I'll miss, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. And And go ahead. A note that these matchmaking sessions will be 10 minute max. So depending on your schedule, um, you can go to your matchmaking and then go back into the panel or the workshop. So it will not be a very lengthy uh, appointment. So you might be able to do both depending on if you don't have them back to back your matchmaking sessions. And and that's another reason. Thank you, Aziza. That's another reason why this this prep work right here is important. You don't have a lot of time in front of the government. You don't. However, that 10 minutes is better than what I hear daily from many of you that you get no minutes. So you take that 10 minutes and you run with it. Um, do you have a template? OK, we answered that one. Um, what about pending contracts and grants submitted? Um, again, I, I think if you're very clear on your capability statement and you're able to speak to it, absolutely. Me personally, not the gospel. I don't, I don't put anything in writing until it is. So that's just the Keith Howard way. That doesn't mean it's the gospel. Uh, Curtis, there's no availability on this date. Please. Okay. Okay. You Cyber professional. I don't see any NIGP codes for cyber. What do I suggest? So I would start, Rick, I would start with the uh, information technology family of NIGP codes and work my way. Right. That's what that's what I would do. If you need help with that, um, you could book some time with uh, someone on my team and maybe me, but one of us can can try and uh, get you some 15 minutes to help you out with that. Um, thank you, Angela. I'm telling you guys, I got rock stars on this biz ops team. Aziza, Angela, Burchell, and Katina are the best. Um, okay, Ms. are the agency strict on the 10 minutes? The agency is us and yes. Yes, like we've assigned people just to be timekeepers. Why do we do that? Because it's 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 fair and just for everybody, right? And I know, because I know me, I've done it. I've sat on the other side where I'm going to make that 10 minutes stretch to 12. So for a Keith Howard in the room, you need a timekeeper. So absolutely, we're going to be very rigid about that. Is there a joint venture session or a way to work with vendors willing to give a hand up to anyone on this call? OK, Anthony, I like I like that. No, to answer your question. No. However, Anthony, if you go to the certification workshop that Corey Beasley's running, you can ask that question because the joint ventures for CBE start in certification. Right, so that'd be a great place to to get you know more penetration on that dialogue. If you don't get it there, please make sure you connect with the BizOps team. We'd be glad to walk you through. Um, what's my email? Keith.Howard, the number three, at dc.gov.
in our matchmaking, can we talk to contracts submitted to their agency? Yeah, you, your time is your time, right? Your your time is your time. So I absolutely, and, and, and that's a good point. That point is really good because here's what I would do. If I know I'm going to be in front of a certain agency, I'm going to go to the uh, Office of a Contract Procurement Transparency Portal, and I'm going to look for work that I can talk to them about. That's what I'm going to do, right? It's got to be concise and, and succinct. I'm glad um, that you brought that up. Uh, do you recommend adding our address if we have an at-home business? You know, that's personal preference. It's Keith.Howard, the number three. There we go. You got it. Thank you. Um, do you recommend adding our address? You know, that's personal preference. I'm always a no on that. Um, what I liked is based in or headquartered in Washington, D.C. or, you know, D.C. based business or something along those lines, just for safety purposes. Right. Just for safety purposes. did speak on most of the rest of the capability statement. Uh, you just want to make sure, I think the last thing is that your contact information, as you can see here, um, David Williams, VP. So make sure that the contact information is somebody that is responsive. So you want to make sure that if somebody is reaching to you for a very quick uh, contract process, that you are available to answer. So you want to make sure that if for some reason, I know some of CBEs have a Google number here, make sure that that goes through to your phone and not just automatically to voicemail. It's very important that you're responsive on the phone and also be. Aziza, you're on mute. So the, the elevator pitch, can everybody hear me? Just nod your head. Somebody nod. There yes. we go. Good. Thank you, Francine. Thank you for that. And glasses are cool, Francine. I, I, I got it. There we go. Right. So here's the thing. Um, I can give you guys some contextual information about the elevator pitch, but at the end of the day, I'm going to say it this way. Confidence and be concise. Right, so I'm going to start with a video here. Um, before I do that, though, just just so you all know, uh, pitching a company is explaining to someone else what your company does and why they should care. Right now, this may be in front of an investor, this may be in front of an employee, buyer, partner, customer. You may get any of those at District Connect, right? But primarily for you all, it's going to be in front of a government agency, right? So, and the time is short. So you've got to speak concisely. <laughs> Where I see folks have no plan, no strategy, they just come in, sit down, and just start rattling off. And the government's sitting there going, okay, is this how you want to use your time? Let's do it, right? And that's, that's you, you want to have a plan uh, as to how you're going to approach uh, your matchmaking session. So I'm going to play this quick video. Aziza, if you can roll that, please. It's muted. Sure. It's a cold night and you're at your son's football game. After the first quarter, you realize these bleachers are so cold, my butt is numb. I have the perfect solution, the hot seat. The hot seat is a cushioned stadium seat with a heated base and back. Now there are cushioned stadium seats available that aren't heated and heated stadium pads that don't offer back support. The hot seat combines these two elements, providing a portable, 
cushion heated stadium seat with a USB port to charge your mobile device. According to worldstadiums.com, there are over 73 million outdoor stadium seats in America alone. I'll use the internet, my personal NFL connections, and amateur booster club organizations to sell 2,000 units by year three, resulting in $120,000 in sales. I need 19 k for development, manufacturing, and marketing. Investors can expect a 3x return by year three. Don't let frost bite your buns. Get the hot seat. All right. Now, I thought he nailed a couple things. One, clearly he was speaking to investors, right? This was kind of a shark tank environment, right? So he's trying to get somebody to invest. But he spoke with confidence, right? And, and I think that's important. You got to believe in what you're selling here because you're asking the government to give you money, but you can't sell that you believe in. So just think about that for a minute. Let that marinate. The other thing is I thought he was concise. But I also thought that might have been to his detriment because he spoke very fast, right? So one thing about me is I'm very deliberate when I speak. There's a certain cadence that goes with it, that comes off confident, and people pay attention without falling asleep. So he was going really, really fast. And so, you know, studies have shown that those that speak fast, sometimes there's something else going on, right? Maybe they're nervous, anxious. They don't believe in what they're saying, et cetera, et cetera. Or maybe it's none of that. <laughs> they just talk fast. But when you're talking too fast, people can't keep up and they miss things that are very important. So just remember, while you want to be concise, you don't want to speak too fast. And you want to have a certain cadence about what you, and you want to pick up on cues. Right. If you see that the person's interested, read their body language. If you see they're interested, you need to jump on that. So uh, an elevator pitch right here, four basic pitches. Right. So a pitch is a brief, persuasive right, speech that is used to spark interest. Right. I did that at the beginning of this training. Right. I was being brief, yet persuasive to tell you all you need to be at this event. And you guys get emails all day long from us telling you to be at events. One more event, but yeah, I'm telling you, you need to be at this one. I think I was persuasive about it. Um, your capability statement is another way to pitch, right? It's a tool. Someone put in the chat, what's the best way to share it? Thank you, Angela, for following up on that. Bring a physical copy, right? It's it's your script. For those of you that can't, you know, you don't remember everything and you rush in and this that, there's your script. There's your safety blanket is your, is your capability statement. Of course, your internet presence. Right. So for those of you that are on the Internet, you have a website, et cetera, et cetera. Make sure that 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 presence is accurate. Right. Because folks, will, you, you're going to give them a website and they go to it is down. Right. Oh, I forgot to pay the bill, which has happened to me before. Right. Or the, the phone number on the website is wrong or worse yet. It's a Maryland address because I'm going to go. Well, how did you get your CBE? There's a Maryland address on your website. Right. So you, you want to make sure um, that, that that happens. Uh, and then the last one is the investor pitch, which is what he did. And that's giving a summary of your company, a business plan, your vision. You all will not have time for all that. You will not, right? So I would say if that's part of your plan, you skip that part of your plan, <laughs> right? You know, they can find out your vision and mission in a second meeting, or they can find that out on your website, et cetera, et cetera but you don't want to spend the time that way. Next slide. The next slide is a practice slide, but we do have a question here okay. from Chibu. He said, do you feel that mentioning in the elevator speech that you've worked as a DC government employee before can be an advantage point? I don't, uh, Chibu, I don't believe it has anything to do with um, the past performance of the company, right? So, no is my knee-jerk reaction, but the, I could see where there would be ways where it would be beneficial, right? For example, if you're bidding on a cybersecurity contract and you manage cybersecurity for a municipality, then, yeah, that does kind of make sense, right? Um, but I, I would probably just stick to what has the company done, not the individual. What has the company done? And let that second and third meeting be more about the key personnel uh, of the of the firm. So I hope that helps. So um, 
I'm glad this is helpful. Good. So, so here's, I'm going to show you guys when I go over like confidence, concise, cadence, et cetera. I'm going to show you guys how easy it is, right? It's very, very easy to have an elevated pitch. So this is the way I'm going to do it before I call on any volunteer who's brave enough to do it in front of everybody is I'm going to give you guys, you can put it in the chat. Give me, um, you could give me a company name and I'll just take it from there. I'm going to give myself about five seconds to put my thought together, and I'm going to go. All right, now you gave me an acronym, Jaleesa. You got to give me you gotta give me more than that. Help a brother out. That's the name. Okay, I got it. Okay, all right, well, you got to give me, give me, give me, what does the V stand for? Give me something. TPS Cyber. I'm going to take that. In the interest of time, I'm going to take that. All right, so TP, TPS Cyber. Okay, so... Um, my name is Keith Howard. I'm the president and CEO of TBS Cyber. We're a full service uh, cybersecurity company. Uh, we are, because we're in the cyber business, we're a 24 seven operation. We'd love to service you and your agency. Here's my card. It's got my name, phone number and address. I hope to hear from you. Done. I don't know anything about that company. Nothing, right? I just, I just, boom, just rattle right off. Here's how, first, I'm real confident. Right. I'm confident in it. I'm confident that I'll be able to do this because I've done it tens of thousands of times. Right. Second, I was very concise. I probably took 12 seconds and I had a certain cadence with. It, right. So I used the same things that I just taught you all. I use those, but most of them were wrapped around the confidence I had and what I was doing. So TPS, I hope you're winning contracts. But I, I just did a great elevator pitch for you there. So, so there we go. So is there someone brave? bad and bold enough that wants to let us hear their elevator pitch. And if you'd like for me to critique it, I'd be more than glad to do it. Martha, go ahead and unmute yourself. Uh, otherwise, if you, because we can't see you all at once, if you could just raise your hand in the chat, that'd be great. Oh, but go okay. ahead, Martha. Raise my hand in the chat, you want me to? We got you. Go ahead. Hello, my name is Bertha, and my company is Ansley Connect 2. It is a population health management uh, consulting firm, and I am the principal consulting counselor. <laughs> That's wrong. I'm done already. I'm done. I'm done. So, the aim so of my, okay, but wait a minute. The aim of my company is to connect with with uh, healthcare organizations to provide safe, quality, and equity healthcare delivery. Period. I got to work on it. That's yeah. it. Okay. So, so here's here's the feedback I'd give you: is less is best when we're talking about what our titles are and this. And less is best, right? Use the C-suite stuff, right? I'm the I'm the managing partner. I'm the owner. I'm the CEO, I'm the, you know, just something that's real easy, down and dirty, stuff that people have heard, like they know what a CEO is, right? That's okay. Sort of um, but way to step out there, though, because then you just got a free commercial. All, everybody else heard you, right? So it looks like we got somebody else. Yeah. Fat, I'm sorry if I mispronounced this. Fadzai, go ahead. Thank you. You were pretty close. It's Fadzai. Um I guess I would say I'm Fadzai Namboro. I'm the principal of District Consulting. We are a marketing and advertising firm uh, that focuses on delivering on performance and uh, brand strategies for the, the clients we work with. I got a little distracted. <laughs> so so I liked it. I thought your, your clothes was starting to, like you got to nail, the clothes needs to be as strong as the opening, right? And, and, yeah. and if you notice, in mind, I asked for, I said, I'm going to follow up with you. I look forward to talking to you again. Here's my card with my email and phone number, et cetera, right? So it's kind of like that close is like a call to action, right? Okay. So way to step out there, though. I like that. I like that. All right. We got we got one more. Don't be shy. You ain't be shy when you went trying to win a contract. Be shy now. Can I give it a try? Please. <laughs> Who is that? Who is that? Uh, Evelyn. All right, go ahead, Evelyn. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Evelyn Iraeta. 
my company is Plena Counseling Consulting, CBE approved. As a counselor, I have been uh, helping uh, thousands of uh, people, students, high school students uh, for the past seven years. And I'm seeking to continue to do that and have access to capital to continue to provide counseling services uh, and consulting services to uh, district residents. I look forward to speaking with you. Here's my information. All right. I like the clothes, but you were bumpy. You were bumpy in the middle, right? And I think you were bumpy in the middle. Here's what I heard. My confident, okay, I think, I think I got it. I think, no, it's I know, I'm good. Like we're, we're, we're all at home right now. We can't break anything right now. So step on out there with confidence. And then the other thing was, I thought your cadence was, I could, I could feel you thinking of what to say, right? So when I'm speaking, you don't feel that. Right. I, I could I could feel that you're thinking of the next thing to say. And now that's distracting me from giving you from really honing in on what your company's capabilities are. Right. Does that make sense? So just keep practicing. Just keep practicing. It's not an intuitive Thank you. skill. Absolutely. One last one. Rick Carbonero. No, is that CPS Cyber, right? Uh, yeah. So uh, this is Rick Carbonero. I am the owner of TPS Cyber. We help organizations implement and improve their information security programs. This is important because in 2022, approximately 25% of organizations suffered some sort of cyber breach with the average cost of about $2 million. All right. Well, Rick, it was better than mine, but which it should have been because you, you are TPS and I am not. Um, I was good up until you said this is important. Okay. I thought that this is important while it was important and it was good. I thought it, I thought you could have a better call to action close than that. Right. So I would have replaced this is important with something else as a call of call to action to the person that you're talking to. Whatever that is. Right. So okay. other than that, you had me up until right then. So that was good. Okay. So um, good. I appreciate those uh, brave, bold souls who stepped out there. That's good stuff. Um, I wrote in the chat earlier that I think you guys are uh, ready uh, to win. Uh, this day will be all about winning. And um, I just want to tell you guys a quick uh, story about someone that appeared at District Connect last year. This CBE was frustrated. They hadn't won anything. They've been a CBE for, I believe, like three or four years. They've got hundreds of codes. They, they claim to be able to do a lot of different things, which is fine, but they just weren't winning. Um, they, they've worked with my team. They've worked with um, the certification team. They've worked with our Apex Accelerators team, and, and they go to all the events, and they were just frustrated. Well, that same person, that same business is now in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, on a all expenses paid trip, we sent five CBEs. Well, we didn't send FanDuel, the sports book, sent five CBEs up. But that started at District, District Connect. That conversation started at District Connect. It kept going throughout the fiscal year, right, where this CBE kept showing up. They kept dropping their card. They kept having conversations. They kept sending emails. And they got a win, right, which was, which was a trip uh, with four other CBEs. Uh, out to that conference. That's a big deal for that company, right? That's going to be some free professional development for that individual. Um, and they are looking to get in the sports wagering industry. What better place to do it than, than at the G2E conference? So what I'm saying to you is for those of you that are expecting to show up at District Connect and, and get a contract, uh, that, which by the way, that has happened. But what I'm saying is it's more times than the not that you're planting the seeds for your harvest throughout the fiscal year. That's why we do it in October, right? Because October 1st is the beginning of the fiscal year. New begin, right? So I just want to encourage all of you to take that mantra uh, into uh, District Connect uh, on October 24th. Um, you want to do one last call for questions? Yeah, so just questions. Uh, if you have them, just feel free to put them in the chat. We have a couple of minutes left. And while we are waiting, um, 
I would like to say, based on, you know, you guys doing the pitch, just make sure you also use each other as a resource. There's a lot of um, CBEs in here uh, in these trainings, but also at District Connect. Make sure you network with one another. That is a great way to find out about new opportunities, and maybe you can collaborate, uh, subcontract together, et cetera. But just make sure you use one another as a resource as well. That's really important. And uh, if you scroll up in this chat, I have dropped all the links. So the link to the registration for the event, which I hope all of you have already registered for, the link for matchmaking, and also the event website. On the event website, you'll find uh, a floor by floor description. So what's going on on the second floor, who will be there, what's going on uh, at matchmaking, all the agencies, regional partners, primes, sports books that will be there, and also a detailed breakdown of who will be doing the workshops as well as what will be uh, the informationals in the lightning room. So that will have all the information you need. So we'll just stay on till uh, one if anybody ends up having a question, but if you are uh, done and don't have any more questions, you are free to leave. This is Rick. I, I have a question. What, what is the so you, you mentioned, um, you know, it's good to utilize each other and possibly team with one with one another. How would you how would I go about or how would anybody go about finding out what businesses are similar to theirs so that they could you know reach out to that business, potentially team with them? OK, give me a second. So I'll show you actually how you can find all the other CBEs in the directory and how you specifically search out those that might be in your um, field. Hey, just, just to piggyback on that, I, I also encourage CBEs to use this tool, which is the CBE directory, not only to connect and do business with, but also to get intelligence on your competition, right? So you could use this for both, right? So you want to know who else has NIGP codes that you have? No. Who else is doing the work that you're doing? What are they saying about themselves? So this tool she's going to give you, is, it's a good, it's a CBE directory, it's public knowledge, right? So it's no secret, it's no hope and focus, it's just public knowledge. All right, thank you. Yeah, I got it, I got it, Yeah. I'm just sharing my screen so you can all see. I'll do really a copy of the um, slide deck and uh, the presentation. Yes, I'll be sending that at the end. Thanks, thanks both of you guys. You did a great job, and uh, this is important for us as a CBs. I appreciate all you do. Thank you. No problem, and thank you. I'm glad this was helpful to you all. Appreciate you saying. Um, so what you're going to do here is this is primarily the CBE portal. So to get here, I'll show you also how you will get here. So first of all, you're going to go to the dslbd.dc.gov. That's our agency website. Then hmm? it's still. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me realize it wasn't presenting anymore. Um, Can you all let me know if you are seeing the DSLBD website or if you're still seeing the PowerPoint? This episode is the website. Okay, thank you. I'm seeing the website as well. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks for the feedback. So you'll go to the dslbd.dc.gov. And then when you scroll down, you'll see right here, there's the CBE logo and it says find certified companies. You will click that. And upon that, you'll find this page and right here, find a certified company, visit the CBE search portal. So that's gonna take you to the initial page. From here, the way you wanna do it, especially if you're looking, uh, well, initially all the CBEs are listed right here. So you can see, there are 2,023 CBE certified right now. So this is very lengthy. If you wanna go through this one by one, if you have the time, 
go ahead and do so. But if you want to narrow it down to uh, CBEs in your field, I'm going to show you how to do so. So um, I think it was Duane, I'm not sure, who asked the question about connecting with CBEs. What field are you in? Uh, cybersecurity or information technology. Awesome. So the way you're going to narrow it down is you're going to click right here, select an ITP code. Sorry, accidental. And then this pop-up will come. And then right here, you'll add a description word. So you said cybersecurity or information technology, right? So I'll put okay. information technology. And make sure you don't do things like press enter. You want to make sure that you click the search because um, it has an issue when you do like enter. So make sure you search. So nothing is coming up, but you could modify it. So let's do search by information. Um, just technology. So we'll use the keyword that you think is best. You can play around with it, but let's do technology. So under technology, all these different codes are coming up. So let's search for information technology. So that one right there, technology, strategic technology planning at the very top. This one right here. Yep. Yep. Okay. So we will click that and then. Also, when you see this arrow, that means there's another NIGP code hidden under it that pertains to that first NIGP code. So you click that and you see that it populates to the right over here. So you'll click done. And then you'll see that it populates over here. Click search. When you do that, it narrows down all the CBEs in the you know, the CBEs that have that code. So basically these, for the most part, are the companies that you can network with that do similar things to you. So when you do that, you'll get, if you want more information, you'll click in here. If you want to see what kind of NIGP codes that they have, you may not have it, but you have the capability, so you could go request that. But generally, you'll see their email, their address, and their phone number. So you can reach out to them. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. And this this is the kind of information you guys get when you book technical assistance time with us. So um, there are a couple ways to do that. One is you could meet us in person on the fourth Wednesday of the month at the MLK Library. You have to book that time. Um, you want to put that in chat. Yes. So that's called Small Biz Assist. You would book that time from the DSWD website. Um, I'm there every fourth Wednesday, and then I rotate stay. Uh, and then you could just book time with us individually, um, send an email to the business.opportunities email, and someone will get back with you to schedule time to uh, get some of that. We'll, we'll usually do, um, you know, somewhere around three or four sessions with you, right, to get you kind of up and started. And then um, we usually will pass you over to our Apex Accelerators team. Um, that team, that's what they do is technical assistance. Um, but they really, their primary uh, audience is federal government, um, but they will help our um, small and local as well. Okay, so we, it is 1.02, we have went over the time, but this was a great session. Once again, I will uh, present to you guys that, you know, District Connect, October 24th, Please be prompt at 9.30 a.m. It is at the MLK Library downtown. Um, if you have any questions, please email us at business.opportunities at dc.gov. It could be found in the chat, but I'll also put it in here right now. Uh, and you can also find Keith and I email in the chat. Um, thank you so much again for coming to this training and we look forward to seeing you all at District Connect two Tuesdays from today, so October 24th. Bye everyone. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you.